Saira Shah Haleem, in your appreciation, is this an important step towards gender, justice, common laws for all, or is there trouble with the aspect on the live-in relationship? Well, Gaurav, good evening. Well, it's a mixed bag, you know. Here, let's talk about what the Uttarakhand Uniform Civil Court, what it does and what it does not. As far as giving, you know, the recognition to the so-called illegitimate children, I think that is quite laudable and uh, it is an encouraging step that the children who are born, you know, out of the premises of marriage, they would be given the due recognition. However, here, uh, you know, what I have concerns about is the binary genders of male and female who are in heterosexual relationships only, okay? So it is progressive, whereas the so-called illegitimate uh, children are concerned. However, we need to look at, you know, these certain causes. For example, now supposing a couple, uh, if the marriage is broken down irretrievably, now what happens to such marriages? Would two unhappy people be, you know, kind of obliged to stay put in a marriage. Now, there are different questions that come up. But there now, is a separate as aspect. One part of the law is on divorce. Right, right. So now, right now, what the debate is about, that the live-in relationships being registered, my only concern is that vigilantism is going to increase because here, as it is, when we are fighting the so-called con concocted theories, you know, propagated by the right wing of love jihad and other things, interfaith couples will be really challenged because here vigilance or some loony, lunatic elements might come and harass interfaith couples or okay. even same-sex couples because here we need to understand that here state will be giving sanctions okay. to moral policing. So here now, any lunatic can come knocking and harass an interfaith or a same-sex couple saying, now this is the state has sanctioned it, that you need to, uh, you know, what you call, register your uh, live-in relationship. Let me get Sardar R.P. Singh to respond to this. Sir, respond to the allegation that this aspect about registration of live-in relationships is moral policing and police or the state now enters your bedroom. Well, Gaurav, it's shocking that, I mean, uh, uh, the madam has picked up part of it and then is appreciating part of it that, yes, it will give uh, recognition to illegitimate children and all. But, yes, if you have a, uh, the process of uh, having uh, the illegitimate children is being questioned. I mean, if someone is saying that if you want to have a relationship, then please have yourself registered also. What's wrong in it? I mean, I, mean, I appreciate that. And, and we have seen a lot of cases in recent uh, past uh, less than a year where a lot of things have happened in living relationship and people, uh, the uh, girls have been killed, I mean, butcheredly killed by the partners. Okay. Because, uh, and then uh, later on being thrown uh, in dustbins or in, in uh, uh, or being thrown in canals. But so this will take care of all that. And so if you have a relationship, acknowledge it and then stay with the woman. There's no issue. Okay. And but the the bigger issue, give me a second, give me a second. But the bigger issue is, I mean, you are confining to live in relationship. The bigger issue is how women uh, will be more able now. I mean, uh, how women will be more empowered now. I, let me take this one by one. Thing. Let's let's uh, you know uh, spend a moment mm -hmm. on this live in relationship aspect. I'll come on women empowerment in just a moment, uh, as you say it would do. Uh, Tehsin Punawala. A woman former judge of the Supreme Court of India, Justice Ranjana Prakash Desai, played a key role in the drafting of this bill. If the argument is being made that registration of live-in relationships is important to ensure, one, children who may be born out of such a relationship get all the legal rights as in a marriage. Is this wrong if it ensures safety of women in an abusive relationship that R.P. Singh refers to, a live-in relationship where this girl was cut into multiple pieces and her body was thrown in different parts of the national capital, it is for women's security. So there are two aspects to it. One is the child aspect, one is the abuse in a relationship aspect. Okay, let's accept that. So why did the BJP, why doesn't the BJP uh, legalize marital rape? When a marriage of woman is raped? Dead they said a family will break. You think these guys, the BJP ever cares about women? Second, yes, if a child is born out of a wedlock, it's not a child. So, uh, it's not wrong. You can then register the living at that point of time when the child is born or the woman is pregnant and give the child the right or, or be upon a DNA test. 
but the fact that the police can come into your bedroom, the registrar can order an inquiry. Look at how dangerous this is. The registrar will obviously target interfaith, intercaste couples. What if, what if it is a, a, a couple that is a same-sex couple? Because that has not been allowed in a relationship. Then the police will come in. Who is the police to enter somebody's bedroom and bed? Now let's assume it's a polygamous woman, not a man. Or somebody does not want to get married because they believe that their relationships will be sexual with different people and therefore they don't want to come into a marriage. Who is the government to enter your bedroom? What if it's not a relationship, it's a situationship? Who is the government to enter your bedroom? <laughs> what if it's a fling? One second, sir, let's understand. There are many aspects to this. If you truly want to protect women, make marital rape, number one, number two. Yes. When a woman is pregnant, she can really either register a relationship or upon a DNA test, can, the child can get the rights. Why do you have to have the police enter the bedroom? That is the problem.